energy is the touchstone of all life. Energy turns the wheels of civilization. And for all human progress, power is essential. Coupled with a doubling of the world's population within the next hundred years, which is the least that we can expect, this would exhaust the known reserves of fossil fuels in under a century. It is in this simple arithmetic, no allowance has been made for the fact that the standard of living of the industrially advanced countries is rising and we hope will continue to rise. Dr. Homi J. Bhapa, President of the First United Nations Conference on the Peaceful Uses of Atomic Energy, held at Geneva in 1955. It shows that our presently known reserves of coal and oil are insufficient to enable the underdeveloped countries of the world, which contain a major part of its population, to attain and maintain for long a standard of living equal to that of the industrially most advanced countries. It shows the absolute necessity of finding some new source of energy if the light of our civilization is not to be extinguished because we have burnt out our fuel reserves. It is in this context that we turn to atomic energy for a solution. Long before this assessment was made, Dr. Bhabha had visualized a nuclear power program for India. Fortunately, our land is rich in this new source of immense energy. Very large resources of nuclear raw material were discovered. Thorium in the monazite sands of Kerala and uranium in the mines of Jadagoda in Bihar. But the nuclear know-how had still to be developed. When uranium undergoes fission in a reactor, enormous heat is produced. This heat is drawn off and converted into electrical energy. This is part of the complex new technology of nuclear power. Much of this technology had to be developed by patient research. Chemical and metallurgical laboratories were established. The Tata Institute of Fundamental Research in Bombay was asked to train scientists in the techniques of nuclear physics and to set up an electronics production unit. Later, it was decided to centralize all these specialized activities at Trombe near Bombay, opposite the famous Elephanta Island, and the atomic energy establishment was born. A sylvan setting for a marvelous new technology, our first nuclear reactor, the result of a daring decision. In just over a year, Indian scientists and engineers, working entirely on their own, designed and built Asia's first reactor. Your attention all personnel. This pool-type reactor on a memorable day in 1956 became critical. That is to say, it achieved a state of self-sustaining chain reaction. I named this swimming pool reactor Apsara. Whatever might happen, whatever the circumstances, we shall never use this atomic energy for evil purposes. On the 20th of January 1957, Apsara and the atomic energy establishment Trombe were formally inaugurated by Mr. Nehru. Another reactor at Trombe, this one built with Canadian collaboration. Canada was to supply the fuel elements for the initial fuel charge except what we could ourselves fabricate. 
This was a challenge to our scientists and the challenge was accepted with great self-confidence. It was a challenge with all arts against the group. The know-how available did not extend beyond laboratory curiosity. Hardly five countries were making their own fuel elements then. As far back as 1948, far-sighted persons like Dr. Bhava had realized the importance of thorium in India's atomic energy program. Thorium plant in Trombe and ARS plant in Alve are the results of this foresight. These two plants were established to supply the thorium and uranium requirements of the Department of Atomic Energy. Thorium plant is the first unit to be established in Trombe. It processes concentrate of thorium and uranium obtained by treatment of monazite in the rare earth plant. Thorium oxide is supplied to the fuel fabrication section and uranium fluoride to the uranium metal plant. In nuclear pure uranium, impurities can only be permitted in quantities less than one half of one part per million. Rigorous analysis and quality control are needed at all stages. In spite of all these complexities and the fact that no such plant had ever been built in India, the first uranium ingot was produced in 1959, 12 months after work had started on the uranium metal plant. With mounting enthusiasm, further work was carried out. And when the Canada-India reactor, or CIR, now called Cyrus, went critical, half the fuel charge was composed of Indian-made fuel elements of the highest quality. But the Cyrus fuel element is not the last word. The search for better fuels is on, especially uranium oxide fuel elements for power reactors. Jadaguda, a huge uranium ore mill, India's first, set up with the expertise developed at Trombe. The fuel elements, meticulously made at the fabrication plant, go to the reactor Cyrus. Cyrus is an awe-inspiring achievement and a magnificent sight. Here is the main experimental hall where various experiments and studies in nuclear physics are carried out. Cyrus is India's biggest research reactor and one of the world's most powerful. Attention, main floor operator. Sample the reactor all sum. Attention, main floor operator. Sample the reactor all To be self-sufficient in reactor technology, a third reactor, Zerlina, was designed and built at Trombe. This is a low energy reactor meant for studying various fuel rod arrangements in reactor cores with different fuels and moderators. Another monument of self-reliance and self-sufficiency is a plutonium plant. Some of the uranium in a reactor gets converted by irradiation into plutonium. This, when separated, can also be used to produce power. This extraction is done at the plutonium plant. When the Trombe plutonium plant was commissioned in 1964, India was the fifth country known to have an operating plutonium plant of its size. Indian Atomic Power Program visualizes the utilization of the vast thorium resources. Plutonium forms the link between the natural uranium reactors that are being built today and the advanced thorium breeder reactors proposed for the utilization of the thorium resources. This well-instrumented plant has been designed for remote operation. The 
plutonium laboratory, where the plutonium is converted into the metal, is designed for total containment of the extremely toxic plutonium. That so complicated and difficult a project as the construction and operation of a plutonium plant should be accomplished without any foreign technical assistance shows what can be achieved in this country when guided by a person with a zeal and vision and courage like the late Dr. A.J. Baba. Such self-reliance and confidence form the keynotes of all the achievements of the atomic energy establishment from Bay, whether in reactor engineering, chemical engineering, chemistry, biology, metallurgy, or nuclear physics. Power from the atom is our main goal. Three sites have been chosen for nuclear power stations. Parapur near Bombay, Ranapratap Sagar in Rajasthan, and Kalpakam near Madras. Tarapur power station is nearing completion. When commissioned, it will supply cheap electricity for the industrial development of a vast area. Work on the Rana Pratap Sagar station is proceeding, while preliminary work has started on the Kalpakam project. All these stations make use of Trombe expertise and planning. Such is the phenomenal progress of nuclear technology at Trombe. With all this expertise today, India is in the forefront of atomic energy work. And that is largely due to Dr. Pabha's foresight and vision and the pioneering work done at the atomic energy establishment Trombe, which has now been rightly named the Pabha Atomic Research Center.